The Western Cape continues to battle high numbers of COVID-19 infections. Yesterday, the province, which is the epicenter of the pandemic in South Africa, welcomed a group of Cuban doctors who will be deployed to hospitals there. Let's discuss the situation in the province. We're joined by Western Cape Health MEC, Noma French Mbombo. Good evening and thank you so much uh, for your time tonight. Now, of course, uh, we, we, we've, we're watching the increase in cases of uh, positive COVID-19 cases. Among them recently has been a teacher, and all of this comes in the run-up to the province getting ready to get back to school. Speak to us about whether or not that particular infection in Delft is going to impact or affect the rollout of the school program. Um, thank you, Kathy. And uh, we, we mustn't take uh, things out of context because remember, uh, Delft is one of the suburbs that are part of the Tiger Belt and also is one of those uh, that we identify as a hotspots where we are putting all interventions there. Because one may make an argument and ask, so what about an S who comes from Delft? What about the police who comes from Delft? But the point uh, that I'm trying to, to highlight is that uh, as part of the interventions, uh, we are upscaling uh, in terms of the mop-up. What we mean by the mop-up, it means where we put all resources, wall of government, the wall of society, to ensure that all these hotspots, at least within um, two to six weeks, uh, should be dealt with um, in, in, at a higher level of intervention than the rest. Sure. You're trying to deal with the hotspots, and yet at the same time, we're moving down to level three. Now, part of what we were told uh, prior to this move was that there would be a differentiated approach, especially in the districts where some of these cases are, uh, seem to be escalating, and there isn't a clear picture yet that those numbers have been contained, let alone are uh, are coming down. Do you think that the Western Cape needs to take that approach, uh, that even though the province may be on lockdown level three, certainly there's a case to be made for some of the districts to go up a couple of notches? Um, remember, the, the, the issue about the, the, the lockdown notches uh, are not necessarily uh, have got to do with the interventions that from the health side that we have to implement in those cases. Let me qualify my statement. Whether it would have been in, even in lock, lockdown one, but one still have to adhere to the issues of the social distancing, etc., and also about protecting the vulnerables, and also to ensure uh, that uh, for those who are ill uh, should be taken care of. So irrespective of any type of a lockdown, taking into account that actually in Delft, for example, uh, the most cases were due from the clusters, which is the biggest shop. There's a biggest supermarket there where it resulted to more than 50 cases, and of which now the people will go to their communities and, and uh, infect the others. Yes, indeed. In the red spot, uh, you have to do things, I mean, in the hot spot, you have to do things differently. As I mentioned earlier, it's not only about the health response, because in some areas, we'll have to have human settlements in terms of de densifying the area so that to, to stop the spread when they have, especially when they are vulnerable communities. Uh, and also for vulnerable communities, for the, remember, the older persons, irrespective of whether you are a teacher, you are a doctor, you are a nurse, and also you have got other existing medical conditions. Those people have to be taken care of, whether they should be quarantined outside or elsewhere, or if they are not necessarily a contact of the people, but we have to make it a point that uh, we ensure that they don't end up having complications basis on their existing uh, medical conditions. Uh, of so course, taking yeah, it uh, yeah, forward. Yeah. Uh, of course, no, I'm also say. talking about the, the more I immediate situation because um, the reopening yeah. of schools, of course, uh, comes back 1st of June and we're seeing a lot more activity uh, than we would have prior to or rather during this lockdown. So my question is, are you comfortable as the health MEC with all sections and all parts of the Western Cape going to level three while there clearly is still somewhat of a struggle when it comes to containing um, the rate of infections that you're reporting in certain parts of your province? Uh, um, it's the same thing that I would even be comfortable even when uh, actually when the shops were all open 
I made an example that most of these infections happened at the time that there was a level five, and the people who were affected were the actual essential service workers. Uh, in hospitals, the people who get infected are also essential service workers, which is the nurses, the doctors, and everyone. So the infection has been happening even at the level five. Uh, but what is the difference now? It's about now that we have uh, now categorized them as a hotspot. It means that the level of intervention gets intensified, and it's not only about um, the health response. Taking note that people are still going to go in queue uh, for their pensions, where you find that there's no social distancing. People still go to go to the hospitals or to the clinics where there's no social distancing. So the issue of the school is the same thing that where people congregate anyway. So that's why I was saying whether you are in lockdown five or lockdown zero, the issue of the social distancing, the issue of the hand hygiene and all of those still have to apply. So, so, so I mean, is, is the suggestion that you're making that you feel that for the Western Cape, the lockdown levels effectively don't make a difference to the ultimate number of cases that um, you're having to deal with at any given time? Uh, I think that question could only be answered uh, um, uh, directly by, not necessarily by health, as I'm saying that for health, you still have to apply and implement all health interventions, whatever level uh, the country or the province is. But the mere fact that we identify these areas as hotspot because of the level of high levels of local transmission and uh, the high levels of past two, two weeks or seven days or 14 days where you find that there have been newer infections, but also in terms of the level of when you have got vulnerable people. Remember, a hotspot it could be even a building. When it's an old age home and then you've got many people who are vulnerable in terms of being exposed to infection or also because of their high risk factors. Sure, so the sure. point that I'm trying to make, yeah, from the health perspective, whether you are locked down five, because you mustn't uh, um, a mix at the level of a lockdown in regard to the health response. But the level of the lockdown, it has got to do with in terms of whether the, the economy is being opened, but as health, you still have to operate the same way. Let me say I'm very confused by what you're saying. So you are saying that the lockdown is implemented and largely has an effect on the economy and not necessarily that it has any bearing on the health of, uh, you know, how a, a, a province would, would be? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that at lockdown five, those people still were congregating, uh, be it at the hospitals or at the clinics or at the shopping center, yet they were in lockdown five. Sure, but, but the rate of, that but the rate of infection, that the rate of infection that you were seeing under lockdown level five simply cannot be comparable to what you saw under lockdown level four. So the suggestion that neither of these levels has any kind of impact on the rate of infection to me sounds quite odd. No, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that unlike when it comes to the economy, when the economy is open at lockdown level five or level four and level three, one will see the difference in terms of how they operate. When it comes to health, in lockdown five, we have to put things into place in terms of the health response. In lockdown four, similar things. So when it comes to the health, it's not about that the people when it's lockdown three, who still going to relax or, or whether they're gonna work more because the people will still congregate. So for us, it's about how to make it a point that we are ready and prepared, which is what we are doing. But as we are saying that people mustn't relax just because it's level three. They still have to make it a point that the idea, the idea in terms of the prevention strategies, uh, the social distancing and all of those, but it becomes problematic. Of course, lockdown three should be problematic because it means that almost everyone will be uh, out there, meaning that there will be much traffic of the people going to various places, uh, the level of infection that's going to happen in the workplace, which we have seen also even in the level five. Of course, that is concerning. But my point I'm trying to make is that whilst in some other sectors, probably there might be some of the relief 
when the restrictions have been tightened or when those restrictions, uh, for example, have been loosened, it may make a difference. But in health, uh, we have been working ever since level five. Uh, MEC, I'm going to ask that you just stay on the line and we continue our conversation. There are just a couple of more questions that I need to put to you in terms of the Western Cape's overall readiness to deal with the kind of cases that it's looking at now. Now, my French Mbombo is the MEC for health in the Western Cape. We're going to take a short break. We'll continue with her after this. Do stay with us. one final test can you still hear me loud and clear yes yes fantastic uh, we're going to come back from break now and i'll be with you thank you so much for indulging me okay okay still waiting thanks Thanks for staying on News at Prime. It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. We continue our conversation with the Western Cape's Health MEC, Noma French Mbombo. And of course, they currently have the highest number of COVID-19 infections in the country. Uh, thank you so much for your time, MEC, and for staying with us. One of the issues I wanted to talk about was the pressure that you're seeing on your health systems. You look at a place like Tigerberg Hospital, it seems that the number of cases there, particularly of healthcare workers, uh, is most concerning 105 healthcare workers I believe have been infected with COVID-19 how do you explain that um, the actual number actually two or three days ago was 126 and half of those uh, were already recovered and they went back to work but noting that it's about 2.6 percent of the total staff but I don't I'm not dismissing uh, such a concern because health workers is also a cluster on its own. As we've seen that the South African police services are a cluster, uh, same applies with the shops and all of those and correctional services. And therefore, like a hospital like Tigerberg, which is the biggest hospital actually in the Western Cape, and is the first hospital that was dedicated for COVID only cases. Of course, that is worrying. Uh, especially that when one is, po is positive, it means that those who have been his or her close contacts in the workplace, it means those people also have to be on quarantine uh, for also for, for 14 days. And therefore, that's why our message is always be that people must only go to the hospital when they emergency so that we protect our staff. Hence, we have prioritized our health workers, provide them with a vaccine, flu vaccine. Now it's winter. We find that when we have got other viruses from the flu, when you are uh, uh, vulnerable, it, it hits you mostly. Protection of the health workers in terms of the protective clothing, we have done the assessment in terms of the exposure risk, uh, looking in terms of what type of protective clothing as guided by the national protocol. How they practice safely, 
at least for example now you know like in maternity when we're delivering babies mm -hmm. uh, there's a high level of a transmission what kind of protective clothing that you need uh, to be there the transport for the staff because some of them might not necessarily be infected at the workplace